Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Lift up your two hands towards heaven. Say after me, my father, my father. You are good and kind to me. My life is beautiful. Full of testimonies of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy. I can say that things are getting better. I'm having testimonies of your favor, of your kindness, of answered prayers. My prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. The hand of God is showing in everything connected to me. He's showing in my health. He's showing in my marriage. It's showing in my finance. He's showing in my business. He's showing in my job. Everything is growing. Everything is growing. I've come to return the glory to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Please, you can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just a few announcements. Just a few announcements. The first one is that um, our fasting continues. We have not stopped. Our fasting continues. Every 8.30 p.m. I post a video on fasting and praying online. And I'm hoping that you can watch the video. The second thing, apart from the video, is this. Is that um, um, tomorrow, this week, we're, our prayer is around expedition. We're praying that what will take a long time will be cut short in time. We're going to have the favor and the blessings of God all through in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. Um, there's this beautiful testimony that I hope that one of the days we'll get to share it. It's, it's really about um, one of our church members. He works in um, one of the top um, account, uh, accounting and all the same firms. You know the top five, you know. It's KPM, all those kind of companies, um, PwC. And um, um, four, four years ago, right? Four, five years, five years ago, he asked his boss, he was a manager level, and you have to go manager, they have steps. He asked his boss and said, when, am I gonna, when do you think I can make partner? And the boss literally said, minimum 10 years, maybe all things being equal, it's like 15 years from you to become partner in the company. And he just, in recent time, just really got challenged and began to pray that God will cut down the time for him. And long and short of the story, he was meant to make partner maybe in an average of 15 years. Right now, Right now, as I speak to you, he is a partner. He is a partner. Yeah, he is a partner. He is a partner. He said, Pastor, what should have taken me 15 years? All things. He said, in 15 years, you may still not make it because there's a queue. He said, God has made it happen to me in just five years. I'm saying to you because yeah, that's a good time to clap. That's a good time to clap. Yeah, that's a good time to clap. I'm saying to you because I just want your faith to be challenged. It doesn't matter if you've been there for a long time. Jesus is coming your way today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All of you online, welcome from joining us. You can put in the comment section where you're joining from. I'm joining from Abuja. I'm joining from Lagos. I'm joining from Canada. I'm joining anywhere you join. And if you want to invite your friends to join, it'll be really good. We had a fantastic first service, that, which is the next announcement. Um, the first services um, this month, I'm really teaching and praying for people that have marital challenges or are married but they have delay. This morning was fantastic. You know, it was fun. Pastor Jerry, you want to tell us how this, come and tell us. People, as, you know, also not just teaching, we know we get to pray for people. People were just crying. People were just crying because it was a massive, how was this morning teaching? Yeah. You know, it was, it was a moment with God. Wow. It was a turning point. People were literally crying. You know, when we're praying for people here, it was as if something lifted in their spirit. Praise God. It's the first thing that you don't want to miss. It's been powerful and powerful and powerful. And Pastor Bolaji's message, I have never heard that before, Pastor. Praise God. Praise it was God. powerful. It was Praise powerful. God. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Really good. Really good. Really good. You, it, the good thing is that it's on YouTube. You can go back and watch it. You can share with your friends. And let me say something to you. When you come to this kind of church, you take for granted the richness of God's word. And a lot of people go to church, but they don't, and I'm, I'm really thankful that God gave us that grace. A lot of people go to church and the teaching is either not applicable, it's not something they can understand, you know, what, what, it's a great church. But sometimes what you have to do is to be like, you know what, I get it to pray, but will you also listen to this? 
Because the place of God's word, prayer cannot take. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I feel the auditorium is dark. Is it just me or? It's dark, right? Okay, so will you help us with the light? I don't know what, what's going on. Maybe they change the light or something. You know. Hallelujah. Because it feels darker than, the, than normally what it would look like. Okay, I, it's getting brighter now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, all of you that in the category, you want to please plan to attend the first service. It, it, it's going to be a really great time. All right. So, this month we're talking about prayer. So, if you want to share the link with someone online to attend, go ahead and share the link. And the message, let me tell you some good habits you need to have. Um, I share those of you online. Those of you online, because of distractions, I always encourage you, write an amen, put a hallelujah, put the text there, so to keep you engaged. Because some people just are cooking and doing and watching on the bed. You, know, you need to do better. Just engage online. And then also do next level prayer. If you're watching, also learn to engage. Just like put a comment there. You know, say this blessed me. You know, if I say a prayer the next level, put amen. Like tomorrow, I really want to pray that this is my biggest prayer, that this 2020 will be spectacular for you. It's not, it's see, we pray to me in next level prayer that this year will end without regrets. So tomorrow, I'm asking you, others cannot be testified. I got a testimony the other day, Grant sent me a testimony. It was about a guy, a, a woman that had confirmed cancer. She went back to the hospital. The doctor said, your God answers prayers. We are writing you a clean bill. You are cancer free. I'm telling you. So if other people are getting these testimonies, what about you? You need to get the testimonies also. All right, let's get into the word of God today. So if, if we're sharing, if all of you online type, write something, after the service, do a story, put something, share on your story, share on Facebook, share with someone. That's an easy way to pray the gospel right now. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 15. And I'm talking about four irrefutable laws of answer prayers. And I will tell you where I got this from. Four irrefutable laws of answer prayers. If you've been a Christian for a while, you know what it means. <laughs> you know how frustrating it can be to pray and not see your prayer answered. And for me, you know, I know that people always have all those great stories that since I got born again, God has answered my prayers. But that's not living my experience. You know, it was more like I had to learn these things as I went through life. And... What I'm doing as a Bible teacher is that all of the things that the Lord has taught me personally and I'm learning, I'm trying to teach people. The reason why is this. One of the biggest pain I feel is when you see someone that is genuine and is authentic, drop away from Christ or Christianity and tell you that, I don't think that God is real. I don't think that God loves me. I don't think that God answers prayer. It breaks my heart. You know why it breaks my heart? Because when they tell you the narration you begin to see holes in their story. And you're like, this is not God. This is you. Like, you can see the holes. But there's been nobody there that's been able to teach them that. Sometimes, I mean, when I was younger, there was this popular man that became an atheist. And he said he became an atheist because his, uh, his twin brother died. And he knelt down beside the twin brother and said, God, if you're really up there in heaven, will you bring my twin brother back to life? And the brother did not come back to life. And he concluded... There is no God to me, and he died an atheist. In fact, I know someone that struggled. I mean, I met someone recently, and he said his girlfriend was a faithful Christian, and, and she died in, a, in an accident. And we're like, since that time, I've just struggled my faith. He said, my girlfriend used to encourage me to know God. If my friend can die that way, what, what was God looking at? And people have those issues. And let me just say something quickly to you here. When it comes to other people, just know you don't have all the details. I'm telling you, what they tell you is what they tell you. What you know is what you know. And the second thing is this. When you pray for people, and this is a very deep lesson in prayer. This is a very deep lesson in prayer. When you pray for other people, remember the people you pray for have a will. And God respects their will. What does that mean? If I'm praying for my sister or my brother or my cousin not to have a divorce... And they are bent on having a divorce. No matter my prayer, they will have a divorce. Because I can use my prayer to superimpose on their will. That's witchcraft. That's not prayer. It's witchcraft that takes somebody else's will and impose on them. It doesn't work that way. If God can force you to do what you, you don't want to do, you know what he force you to do? By now, you'll be by force be born, born again. 
Because the most important thing to him is that you what? You become born again. If God cannot force you to become the most important thing in life, to become born again, there's nothing else he can force you to do. You know, um, some years, um, I mean, recently, one of our leaders, the, the dad got sick. And she was like, she just called me and said, Pastor, why do you pray for my dad? And I, as I prayed, I was like, wow, I just felt this resistance. I'm like, does your dad still have the will to leave? He said, I, I don't know. He said, what does that mean? I explained the concept to her. So I told her, go and see your dad. And when you see your dad, talk to him and, uh, about an event in the future. If he has a will to leave, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to recover and attend the event in the future. If he doesn't have the will to leave, he's going to be like, I don't care. I'm never sure I'll be around for it. As soon as I spoke to the dad, they were like, I said, what did your dad say? It didn't, matter. it didn't matter to my dad. I said, oh, wow. Your dad is beginning to lose the will to leave. If you don't fix that loss of will, our prayers will not work. I said, you have to fix the loss of the will to leave. And we couldn't fix it, and the father passed on. In fact, she now eventually confessed to me that a week after that time, her father said they saw angels. I said, you seen angels? Ah, that's all. The reason why is that when you see the glory, what do you desire on it? It's because you've not been to heaven. That's why you think it is good. Someone says, ah, Nigeria is very fine. Because you came from the village and you've got to Abuja. Ah, Nigeria is very fine. It's because you've not gone to the U.S. If you go to Dubai, you'll be like, what? Ah, you mean we're in the village in Abuja? Glory to God. So, when you pray for other people, one of the things, do you know that Jesus Christ could not even convert his own brothers and sisters. The reason why is that they have their will. These are principles that guide prayer. So today, I want to talk about prayer and talk about there are certain laws and principles that guide prayer. Look at this. And that's why a lot of people pray. And when they pray, they think it's God is holding them back. They are the ones that walk in the prayer as well. Let's look at an example here. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 15 Matthew chapter 15. So are there laws that govern prayers and make it more effective? Of course there are. Oh, wow. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Is that where I should start from? Maybe I should start from Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Verse 5. The Bible says this, And when thou prayest, this is what you must know. Why does Jesus give a lot of instruction about how you pray? The reason why is that Jesus knew that a lot of people were praying, but were not seeing accurate results from their prayers. So Jesus began to say, I don't want you to be heartbroken. The reason why is this. When people pray and don't see results from their prayers, sometimes they feel abandoned. They feel God doesn't love them. Sometimes when people don't see answers from their prayers, they begin to question the character of God, the integrity of God, the existence of God. Sometimes when people don't see answers from their prayer, they sink into a depression because they really feel that God has forgotten them. So one of the things Jesus began to do was this. Jesus saw all the effort people had in prayer. He now began to teach and say, hey, this is the way you will get resolved by prayer. So he's teaching us about prayer here. Nobody taught us exactly how to pray because they didn't know it until Jesus Christ came. Jesus came, this is the way. So in the Old Testament, everybody prayed the way they thought they could pray. And in the New Testament, just get this is the principle of prayer. Look at what it says. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrite. Why not have hypocrite? Bible says, for the what? Is it amazing? Some people that love to pray have no result in their prayer. Bible says, don't be like them. Hypocrites love to pray. A lot of people that pray are for are hypocrites. Why? Should I tell you something? Prayer has a therapeutic effect, even if God doesn't answer. So you'll see some people that just pray a lot, not because they want answers to their prayer, but because of the therapy on their mind. It just releases their stress. It says hypocrites, that, that's a, it, it even the disciples love to pray. In the Bible, the only people that I say love to pray are hypocrites. But guess the difference. It says, hypocrites love to pray. Standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets. That, why did they love to pray? Look at the motive. That they may be seen of men. Very nice say unto you, they have their what reward. So, God says, if you love to pray to be seen of other people, prayer is cancelled. Meaning, in the place of prayer, motive matters. But let's keep going. See, see I want to show you 
It's just some principle. So I'm only showing you because when you say my prayer is not answered, it's not a personal thing. There are lots of people in the Bible that their prayers were not answered. And when you read the Bible and dig deeper, it was not really God. It was just the way they did. So these hypocrites are wondering, these hypocrites pray a long time. They will fast two, two days in a week. They will pray and the prayers are never answered. And look at what the next thing the Bible says. The Bible says, this, but when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you fast, shut the door. Pray to the Father which is in secret. Pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father said in secret, shall word openly. Of course, when he said that, it was not literally saying that, go and shut the door. What was saying that when you pray, make it as personal as possible. Don't be so concerned about showing up your prayer life. And it says, when you are that kind of person, you will have results from your prayer. But look at what it says. And it's giving us, this is why people don't pray this way. This is why they pray this way. This is why they have results, but they don't have results. Look at the next line. He says, and when you pray, look at what it says. You know what? What's vain repetition? Now, someone says, wow, that's why I don't repeat my prayer. That's not what it says. It says, you know what? Vain repetition. What's the difference? Vain repetition is, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. You know, you're just saying to make your prayer long. I can keep saying something because of emphasis and passion. So, you look at your wife, you say, baby, I love you. I say, I love you. You say, I love you. You say, I love you so much. See, I'm saying it, but with the change of tone, I'm increasing the intensity of what I'm saying. That's not vain repetition. That's heart repetition. Vain repetition is, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. I'm just saying it so that I can feel as if I can get prayer count. And Jesus is saying that, the people that pray this way, the prayer never works. He says, when you pray, use not vain repetition. What they use it to make their prayer long, then they use it to hope that God can really hear them. See what the Bible says. For as the hidden do, why? He said, as the hidden do, why? He says, for they think there's a problem, that they will be heard because of what they are much speaking. They think that for me to, for God to hear them, they must speak for a long time. So, it's not about what they're saying. It's a motive in their heart about what they're saying. I, I'm using it to establish something that if you feel your prayer not answered, you need to relax. Because throughout the Bible, there are people that their prayer wasn't answered. And instead of them getting depressed, getting angry, feeling abandoned, what they did was to learn how prayer should be offered. That's what I'm going to. Because most people, once their prayer is not answered, they come up with all this theory, God doesn't like me, God has forgotten me, God is this, God is that, God is this, God is this. And you just have to relax and say, if my prayer is not answered, what do I need to learn about to pray? Hebrews chapter, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 11 verse 1 says, that apostle said to this guy, he said, teach us to pray. Luke 11 verse 1, let's put it that quickly. Why did he say teach us to pray? When they saw the way Jesus Christ prayed and the result from the prayer of Jesus Christ, and they saw the way they prayed, they said, there's something about the way this guy prays that we need to know to bring about results. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. He sees one of the disciples said to him, he said, teach us to pray. He, they, they, you know what they said, teach us to pray? They say, all of us are praying, but one person is getting results. So, when your prayer is not answered, it's not the time to give up because I know the feeling of being abandoned. I say, but I'm praying for this job. What is going on? Some people send messages. I will commit suicide. They threaten God. I've seen people that strip themselves naked and say, God, I'm praying to you naked. I see nakedness as enhances prayers. Hey, I'm naked, God. Naked. I'm praying to you the way I came. I'm naked. Do you want to seduce him? But the reason people do that is frustration. Sometimes people say, nakedness does not add or subtract from your prayer. What you need is to learn how to pray. And throughout this month, you'll become a person that your friends start coming to and say, pray for me. Because the proof of prayer, answered prayer will be so abundant in your life. You say amen, somebody. Okay, let's get deeper now. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. So, I, I want to accept me. So, so, if your prayer is not answered, don't go, hey, God, oh, no, 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 relax. Say, what do I need to learn? 
I, I want to encourage you, find a way to get this to your friends, for yourself. It's a bless them, for your parents, for your uncle, for your children. It's a bless a long way. Okay, let's read. Let, <laughs> this is good. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. So this is where we start from. There are different kind of prayers, and different kind of prayers have different kind of rules. I was like, eh? Eh? The different kind of prayer. Yeah. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Let's read together. Are you ready? Let's go. He said, I exhort thee therefore that first of all, what happened? Supplications. Is supplication a prayer? Yes or no? If I say let's supplicate right now, what have I said? Let's pray. Supplication one. What's the other one? Prayers. What's the other one? Intercession. Is that also prayer? Giving of thanks. Is that also prayer? But why do you separate them? Because although they are prayers, they are different kind of prayers. And because they are different kind of prayer, there are different rules that guide each kind of prayer. For example, there are many ball games. But all ball games, there's volleyball, there's football, there's what? There's baseball, there's basketball. In a football game, what, guess what? In a football game, we use our leg to kick the ball. In a basketball, if we use your leg, foul! In prayer, what is allowed in a certain type of prayer is a spiritual foul in other prayer. So, in basketball, you just go, bam, 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 hey, 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 bam, 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 hey, pass it, pa, 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 hey, and people shout. In football, once your hand touches the ball, it's a foul. In baseball, we used to, the bat. There are different kinds of prayers, and there are different principles that kind of different kind of prayer. Let me show you something. Let's, let's come here to example table. Everything here is a kitchen equipment. What is this? Micro. What is this? A blender. Question. Can I operate them the same way because they are both kitchen equipment? No. There's a way, microwave, a blender works. You know, say, ah, maybe they are all kitchen equipment. Let's operate them. That's how we do prayer. Prayer is not. An, you see, you must know how prayer works. In fact, let's take it with this blender, and, and I want to show you something else. You know, so this blend, why is it? I, I want the microwave now. Thank you. So this is what I want to say. So there's a microwave here, there's a blender here, and they work in two different ways. Now, I want to take away the blender. Can you take, yeah, let me take this away. Thank you. Do you notice that even though the two are microwave, the way they work are very different. There are some microwaves that you will turn. You will turn like this. If not, don't, 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 don't come back. There are some that you will program. There are some microwaves that combine with other functions. So when it comes to prayer, there are different ways. You can't just say, ah, hey, should, we, should we have a microwave in my house? I can use a microwave. You, you will, how many of you have got this on somewhere else and the microwave embarrassed you? <laughs> oh, wow. You know, because you, because you, you didn't want to feel as if you, before they said that we don't have it in our house. So like, use the microwave. Oh, let me come and show you. Say, don't come and show me. I can, I can, we have it in our house too. That was microwave. You're not God there. You're not saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. And it did not help you. The microwave was born in Thai, Thailand. Well, it's not in English. You're not be looking. Yeah, you know. Eh. Eh. And that's what prayer is. People are just doing lock. Just press and play. Which one? Let me just tell me just be pressing all buttons. And you know what's frustrating? When you do all you can, you become frustrated. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So there are different kind of prayers. What are the kind of prayers? Number one, I mean, we saw it that it's right that I can give you all the, the about maybe 10 type of prayers. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. In the prayer of thanksgiving, all we do. Father, we thank you. There's prophetic prayer. In prophetic prayer, we are declaring what we want to see. So, we're not saying, Father, no, 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 no. We're saying the name of Jesus Christ. I declare this. That's the kind of prayer Ezekiel said, prayed. He said, he said, he said, he said, Son of Man, prophesy. He said, I prophesied. He said, dry bones come alive. And dry bones come alive. In prophetic prayer, you are addressing things, not God. Because in prophetic prayer, we can't command God. We are declaring things as we want them to be. That's prophetic prayer. There's also the prayer of consecration. What's the prayer of consecration? The prayer of consecration is the prayer that, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. 
So in that kind of prayer, most of the time, we don't know what God wants us to do. But we're just saying, God, I want you to do what God, God want, want me to do. And sometimes we'll know what God wants us to do. I'm saying, Lord, it's your will I want. In that kind of prayer, what happens? That's what we say, not my will, yours be done. We don't say, you can't say thanksgiving, Father, I'm giving you thanks. But if it's your will, let thanks be given. No. Because that applies to what? The prayer of what? Consecration. There's a prayer of faith. What's the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is the prayer that something that God has given you in Christ Jesus. That you want to use your faith to receive it. That's a prayer of faith. So in the prayer of faith, I don't go and say, Father, if it's your will that my child should not die, give him a life. No, because I've already the Bible says that I will, nothing will cast my young. It says, I will, my children will bury me, not I will bury my children. So, in the prayer of faith, I don't say, if you think so. No, sir. In the prayer of faith, I'm saying, Father, you said this, I declare, I receive it. There's prayer where you pray for other people. There's prayer where you pray for other people. So, different kind of prayer. So, in this, in this teaching this month, we're going to focus really on the prayer of faith. What's the prayer of faith? The prayer where God has given you something. And you want to receive it. So in the prayer of faith, can you say, Father, let your will be done? Huh? How can you say, let your will be done, when what you are praying for is his will? So in the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, before we start, we have concluded. We know it's our own. That's why we say, find the scripture. What do I find the scripture? Settle it first. Oh, this is very powerful. I, someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. So are we, are we ready to travel in the spirit? All right, let's go. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. This is good. So fundamentals of answer prayers. What are the fundamentals? First of all, if you must, if you must use microwave, you must, know, Alex, you must know how to plug it. Glory to God. You must know how to plug it. How do you, see, you don't understand. If you must use microwave, you must understand electricity. Yes or no? Yeah. If you must use microwave, you must, if you don't use, if you don't, if you have never seen electricity before, you cannot use microwave. You will start from something smaller. Just imagine your, great, your, your grandmother in the village is 99. You bring microwave. She will not even know what to do. Okay, so how do we go? So fundamentals of answer prayer. Hebrews 11 verse 6. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. See what it says. For he that must come to God must what? Listen to the word. Must. He said, this is the first condition. That before you even approach God, there's something you must believe. He said, he must. Not maybe. Not sometimes. He said, as you come to God and say, Lord, I want to pray about this business expansion. I want to pray about this marriage. He said, he must believe. Believe what? That what? He is. You must believe that there is. So, a place of prayer is not a place I'm coming to test God. If you come to test God in prayer, you are failed. He said, God, if you exist, prayer is cancelled. Prayer does not want if you exist. He said, he that must come to God must believe that what he is. Father, if you do this for me in my marriage, I will know you are alive. Prayer is cancelled. Because the way it works. So, can you see what the mistakes are? He that must come to God must believe. See, you know why he said believe? Because believe is something you choose to, is a choice. Because it's a choice. If this brother says he has 10 million in his account, I don't see it, but I believe it because I believe him. So I've not seen God, but it's a choice to believe that he is. But must believe he is and is what? Is what? Is what? Of who? What must you believe? You must believe two things that number one, God exists, number two, God rewards pursuits. You must believe that, see, it's one thing to believe in God. You must believe that my, my pursuit of God in prayer is not a waste. You know what I'm saying, so? Look at me, everybody. A lot, oh my God, Father, thank you. A lot of people pray. 
a lot of people don't have confidence in their prayers. How do I know? Why do you keep looking for prayer up and down? And you know, amazingly, eh, it's Christians that this happens to. They are very strong unbelievers that don't go to church. But they believe that if I knew that and pray, something will happen. I don't know where they got the confidence from. But the church people, and it's a religious spirit, it kills our confidence of prayer. He says, he that must come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I tell myself, all I have to do is to kneel down and pray. It's done. You know, one time I had some challenge. I was telling my wife. I said, on the, I, I, said I don't want to pray. Because if I pray about this, the way to turn out for all the people that are involved, I don't even know what will happen. This is me withholding myself from praying. Because I believe in my prayers. I believe that once my knee goes on the floor, hey, hey, one does that need to be warned. A lot of people don't believe in their prayers. And that's why their prayers are not work. Because the Bible says, he that must come to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder. That means I can't fast in vain. That means I can't pray in vain. That means I can't do this in vain. Is that what you believe? Or you're believing your, is your pastor's prayer? You must believe in your own prayer. You must believe in your prayers. Why don't you believe in your prayer? Because you have been trained not to believe in your prayers. You know how? This is how you don't believe in your prayers. You are, you are easy to forget all your answered prayers. And you are quick to remember all the prayers are still pending. If you have that kind of memory, you will never have it in your prayers. Someone says, I can't remember what God has done for me. Will you keep quiet? Will you keep quiet? Was it not you that was road jammed three times and said, God, this mountain, please do it for me. Now, because you are 48 or 44 or 40, you can't remember how much, how much jam was the problem. You fasted for many days. The people that have come to that prayer, you know what they do? Their memory is very full of what God is doing, of what God has done, of what God is doing, of what God has done, of what God is doing, of what God has done. God has done. People that don't have come to that prayer, they are always conscious of what is pending. When David got to Goliath, Saul said, take my armor. He said, no, no, don't bother, sir. When I was young, a bear came, I tore him apart. A tiger came, I tore him apart. A lion came, I tore him apart. Who is this? On am second time Philistine. Glory to God. You know, I, I was thinking, and I saw this online. I was thinking the other day. What made Joshua? Why did Joshua think he could? Why did Joshua think he could? Um, he could? Take over and chase out the, the Philistine. When all his seniors ran away, I want to see, I think Joshua 17 verse 9. I want to look for it for me. What the Bible says, and Moses rehearsed in the air, rehearsed to Joshua. Just put rehearsed. You know what happened? The scripture just said that one of the things that happened was this. Their victory was rehearsed to Joshua. Joshua had consistently the things of the victory of God. Should I show you how deliberate God is? When they were moving up and down, God said some things you must carry. The rod of Aaron that bought it. Do you know that rod? Let me tell you. I, I saw someone with a walking stick here. Is, it, is that you? Please, can I get this walking stick from him? Thank you. Just give it to me, please. Yeah, thank you. Imagine how dry. So when the Bible says there was a rod of Moses, it's not like real rod. Though, like, it's like proper dried rod. So one day there was a fight that is Moses the man of God. God says, all of you that have rod, bring your rod, put it in the temple, mark your rod. The next day, you can read the story later, I can't have time to show you. By the time they, they put it there in the evening, the next in the morning, by the time they brought out the rod of Moses and Aaron, the Bible says the rod had grown leaves, had grown stems, had grown fruits. <laughs> Imagine this. He said the rod had grown what? Fruits. God wanted to show them, I'm not your mate. When I say, this is what I'm praying for, compression of time. That gesti gesti gestation period will be compressed. <laughs> Just imagine when they saw Moses, they had to be three minutes. <laughs> they, they, they were eating fruit. What, was it planted? It wasn't planted. Why am I saying that to you? 
God told them, he said, as you're leaving, take that rod, put it, carry it with you. You know why? God was leaving things for them called anchors. So that the day you feel as if there's no answered prayer, there'll be something you remember. There'll be something you will see. There'll be something that will remind you that God answers prayers. What most of you don't have is anchors. Hallelujah. Yeah. What most of you don't have is anchors. You need things that when you're going through a tough time, once you go back here, one of the habits I practice is this. Every evening or morning, I write three things that God has done for me that day. You know what that does to me? It puts me in the frame of mind. God is good and kind to me. God is good and kind to me. The reason why is that in this world, all you hear is what's not good, what's bad. What, so I begin to prime my mind by itself. I'm always writing God. So if you come to my, you see there. It's my, I said, today I'm thankful for this. Today I'm thankful for that. Today, so my memory, so when I sleep, my dreams, I don't know how would they chase me in my sleep. How can they chase me in my sleep when the last thing I thought about was the goodness of God? But why would they not chase you? Before you slept, you just start thinking, hey, is that my life will continue? Everything is not working. And you focus on that, it will cause more trouble. Are you here, somebody? Yes, Listen to me. Practice it. Take 21 days. Before you sleep, take a journal. Write. Write. Your life will change radically. You know why? Because you will shift your attention from what is not working to what is working. And whatever, where focus is, energy is. Whatever you focus on multiplies. You want to see people that are depressed? Look at people that are depressed. People that are depressed, continue listening to them. I'm tired of life. And this, they have the most negative vocabulary in this world. You wonder, where did you learn all of this? Some of people talk to me, I'm like, ah, ah. In one minute, the amount of negative what they've used. I'm like, how do you live it yourself? Things are not working. I'm tired of life. I won't feel suicidal. I'm just, everything just broken down. This and this and this. Those are, see, one of the things I've learned about myself is that even when things are tough, I use, I use words to reduce the impact. And what's going on? There are some mild issues. <laughs> I use words to reduce the impact. And that's why people think I don't have a challenge. It's not like that. If I tell you what it is, you'll be surprised. But I use words to reduce the impact. Oh, there were some issues, but you know what? Everything always comes out of control. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. See, before you go to prayer, what is your confidence in prayer? That's why you want to. Is that he that must come to God must believe that he is. And is the rewarder. So I know that my prayer is not empty. Hey, hey, hey. Like now I fast for 31 days. Some of you are not fasting. I feel bad for you. Because I will come out with better results than you. Ah, I know. My prayer is not. Why? The Bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ah, how can I? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. He's a rewarder. All I have to do is to pray about the contract. Someone said, someone said, let's pray. Let's see if God will do something about it. Can you see the, see the prayer? Let's see if God will do that prayer canceled. Let's pray. If God wants, can you see? Cancel. He said, I pray with certainty. Let me put it this way. The principle is this. The more certain you are about answered prayers, the more you see more answered prayers. Oh, my God. <laughs> will, you, will you take in some more? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let, let's show you some scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. The more you are confident in prayer, the more you will see results. Hebrews 4 16. Let's read together. I want to go. I want to read so I can see. Let us what? Notice how he said it should come. He said there's an attitude of those that receive. He said, let us do what? He said, this, this is you. He said, let us come boldly. He didn't say, let us come. No word is wasted in the Bible. Every word was put there intentionally. He said, let us come boldly. Let's come boldly to the throne of grace. It is a beg that we may obtain. That means if you are bold, you obtain. He said, we want to pray for husband, father. She be I'm here. I've been asking you this thing all the time. You don't want to answer me. 
Why? What kind of prayer is that nonsense prayer? See, if you're not a child of God, there's a way to pray. But you're a child of God. These are your rights in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. See, First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14. Look at this also. He said, let's come boldly. Let's come boldly. Let's come boldly. Let's come boldly. Come with confidence. First John 5, 14. Want to go? Let's see. What? This is what the... Co- that we have, that if we ask, according to what? Did you see? Are you noticing how confidence is playing a major part in the prayer? Most people don't pray confidently. They pray doubtly. And the more confident you are about your prayer being answered, the more you see results. I believe in my prayers. Say, I believe in my prayers. My prayers work. Say, my prayers work. They produce results. Oh, let's read one more scripture. Uh, let, let's read. What kills confidence? Sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. That's what First John three twelve says. Even if our heart condemns us, that if you feel bad, he said God is stronger than your heart. Someone says, Pastor, when you pray for the sick, where do you get the boldness from? The boldness comes from that place. The confidence in Christ Jesus. Father, I'm praying for this funding. Lord, you have to pity me. Sincerely, look at all my friends. Look at where they are. Do you see how you are praying like a victim? God, I know I'm not a good person. But at least you are merciful. Because my other friend, Shinikwa, she's also a bad person. But you did it for her. God, so why is my own like this? What kind of prayer is that? There's no confidence in the prayer. You want to pray about your child? Lord, now I'm 40. No child. Is this how we're going? Is this how we're going? You pray as if God is your problem. That's the issue. You pray as if God is your problem. Listen, God is not your problem. Your problem is on the other side. Are you here? Are you here? Let me read one more scripture to you. So, so the first thing we'll do is to pray with confidence. The first thing to, so let's read the second one. So, the more confident you are in the willingness of God to answer your prayers, the more you will see the result of prayer. I love what Jesus Christ is. Are you here? Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, John chapter 11. When he got there, everybody was crying. You should have come on time. If you had not come, you would have not gotten worse. Now, it's over now. You have lost the job. Oh, you have lost the man. You have lost this. You have lost that. You have lost that. Jesus, if you had come on time. Jesus Christ got there. Bible says, when he saw how they were behaving, he cried for them. He cried. He said, hey, the boy I love don't understand. Then you know when he got to the tomb, when it was time to pray, he said, Father, don't embarrass me. Is that what he said? John chapter 11. <laughs> hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says, verse 41, and he took away the stone from where he was, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, you've embarrassed me. You have finished me. Pity me. Show that you sent me. No. He said, Father, I thank you because you heard me. What does that mean? When I prayed for Lazarus before I came, you heard already. I'm not coming back to pray again. I'm thanking you for what you have done. What did he pray? It was not a prayer. He says, I thank you. He says, and I knew that you hear me always. I makaba ya 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 ya. He says, not that you only heard me. I know that you hear me always. You hear me, you hear me today. You will hear me tomorrow. You heard me yesterday. See the confidence. So it says, I thank God. He said, and the reason why I'm saying all of these things. So when I say, Father, I thank you, you hear me. See, you don't even know God. You don't have to say that if he hears you. Amen. He says, the reason why I'm saying all of these things is because of the people that stand by. 
that they may believe that you have sent me. He said, some things I'm saying is not because I need to say it, but so that they will believe. What is in our prayer? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. And when he has thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. There was no need to pray again. He was covered in last prayer. Lazarus, come forth. No, no, ah, ah, Shetan, eh, Shetan, eh, Shetan, eh, Shetan. ah, no, sir. He said, The one I prayed is done. Lazarus, come forth. See the confidence in prayer. <laughs> I said, See the confidence in prayer. I see the confidence in prayer. When have said, Father, and I prayed, and Lazarus died. And I prayed and prayed, and I lost his job. And I fasted. I joined NLP, and I lost him. The man did not even propose. My birthday just passed like that. He didn't propose. The funding, I was praying to get funding to the contract. They say 14 days. 14 days has passed now. Where's the money? You have just embarrassed me in front of everybody. I was there with the doctors, and I told the doctor, I've been healed, I've been healed. The doctor said, keep quiet, see your result. I just said, oh God, oh, I'm not healed again. When Jesus prayed for Lazarus, Lazarus went from sick to dead. It got worse. Did he change his prayer? No. Confidence says, even though it's gotten worse, God is on top of it. Are, are you hearing me? Yeah, pray, Father, I want to be married. married. The boyfriend broke up with you. I said, I'm not doing it again. You're selling with your boyfriend. He said, hey, Father, I'm finished. My prayer is not working against me. I was praying that we should go forward. Now we're going backward. You are praying. I want funding in 14 days. By the 21st day, you have lost the funding. You said, ah, God, no, no. Just Christ said that. Even when it gets worse, it got there. Father, I thank you because you hurt me. Ah, he didn't say, God, what were you looking at? He didn't say, angels, what are you looking at? No, the confidence that God, you're on top of it. Father, I thank you because you heard me. Lazarus, come forth. When it gets worse, remain confident in your prayer. Don't join those that love you. You, you belong to a what church. You belong to a prayer church. Don't join. You, when you go to the office, you teach them what I'm teaching you. You've been taught well. So when they say, hey, hey, this is stage one cancer. It's not sex. You say, I've prayed. Why? The bigger the mountain, the bigger the shame. The bigger the Goliath, the bigger the fall. It can only get, see, you don't understand. It can only get better. All right, they've prayed. They say, the way your child is behaving, it can only get better. They say, where your job, the, the way your job is, it can only get better. They say, you lost the money, it can only get better. He says, say unto the righteous, it is well with you. The path of the righteous is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. The guy broke your heart, it can only get better. You lost the phone, it can only get better. You made the loss, you can only get better. It can only get what? I didn't hear you. I said, it can only get what? It can only get what? Ah, our success is not epileptic. Give me some volume. Our success is not epileptic. It's not up to the down tomorrow. No, sir. It can only get better. It can only get better. The, in, in the morning, it gets better. With the bad report, it gets better. With the not to do, it gets better. Why? We are children of God. There's no downward life in our spine. There's no downward lane in our past. It gets better. I say it gets better. I say it gets better. For my finance, it gets better. Say with me, say it gets better. For my job, it gets better. For my health, it gets better. For my mind, it gets better. It can only get better. Why? Better is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. God bless you can have your said. He can only get better. So I'll say, hey, I'm not 35. Who will marry me? It can only get better. This is, that line has passed. It can only get better. It only gets better here. Don't allow the thought of negativity. Sink it. Sink it by speaking positive words. He said, Father, I thank you 
No one spoke like Jesus. He said, Father, I thank you. You always hurt me. He didn't say you're ignoring me. He said, Lazarus has died, but you always hurt me. He said, you've always hurt me. Let's read John chapter 5 and close this. James chapter 5, rather. So the first principle of prayer is this. You must pray based on the revelation that God is good and is willing to bless you. And the more confident you are in that revelation, the more you will see answered prayers. Sometimes when you see me change the songs I sing, I know why I change them because I change them to adjust to my theology. I say, today, today, not tomorrow. Jesus was answer me. This is the picture they paint. Let me get Gerard. Come, uh, you know, Gerard, Gerard, you know. Maybe, you, maybe you can come. Th thank you, thank you, my brother. This is the picture. Come and stand here. So this is God. No, no, this is God. They want to today, today, not tomorrow. God, be going, be going, be going. No, 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 God, God, God. God. They, are, they are chasing God. For, they are chasing God for that miracle. Lord, tomorrow, Father, and as they are chasing God, God is saying no. I, no, that's not me. That's not my definition of prayer. Come again. Today, today. Not tomorrow, sing, sing, sing. Today, today. So this is today, today. Father, Father, please. Father, please, I can't hold you. Yeah, today, today, today. And God is saying, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Because in their mind, God is their biggest problem. Stay there. This is how I sing this song. Today, today. Not tomorrow. Jesus has answered me. Today, today. This is how I see. This is how I see my answer prayer. This is my answer. Take answer prayer. This is my answer prayer. As I'm coming to the Father. Father, Father, be coming to me. Once I say, Father. As I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Before I finish, he has answered me. Why? Because my God is good and kind to me. You know what Jesus Christ said? Jesus said, it is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's pleasure to make sure you are married. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the funding. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the promotion. It's the Father's pleasure to give you the husband. It's the Father's pleasure to bless you in an extraordinary way. I don't have to bribe him. I don't have to psych him. He wants to do it. That's why I pray for. That he's a rewarder of them that let's just seek him. Had he asked him to reward me, it's something he chose to do all by himself. Oh, glory to God. Some people, they pray another prayer. They say, Taku to Jesus, Taku to Jesus. Stay there, stay, stay. Taku, Taku to Jesus. Oh, yeah, push. Oh, there's something happened. Something has happened already. On the cross, something happened. What happened on the cross? He said, It is finished. He said, It is finished. Do you know what it means when he said in 1 Corinthians that the promise of God are yes and amen? What it means is that when it, when it comes to God's promises, all God says is yes and yes and yes and yes and yes. It's my child though. My child has a sickness. He said, oh yeah, the problem, see, the more you think God is your problem, the more answer prayers will be far from you. The more that you see that God is the one that wants to give you the miracle. It's difficult to pray to a God that is against you. That's why most of you don't pray. It's difficult to pray what you feel as if God is against you. But what I know that God is with me is if God be for us, who shall be against us? Start up, let's pray. Lift up your hands and thank Him. Lift up your hands and thank Him. You are for me. You are with me. You are seeking to bless me. You are seeking to change my lives. Everybody, let's go ahead and pray. Oh, let's go ahead and pray. Oh, my komaneha paradiko patashadaya. Rest in God's grace about your marriage. Rest in God's grace about your job. Rest in God's grace about your blessings. Oh, everybody, pray excitedly. Father, thank you. I'm never going to doubt you again. It's your pleasure. Hallelujah. 
I receive the funding. I receive the job. I receive the husband. I receive the goodness of God. I receive it today. 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 it's the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah! 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 The kingdom is given to me. I come boldly to the throne of grace and I'll take mercy. I'll take mercy. I'll take favor. I'll take help. My prayers are working. Declare with me. My prayers are working. Say with me. My prayers are working. Say with me. My prayers are working. Say with me. My prayers are working. I have grace. I have help. I have support. My prayers are working. My prayers are working. My prayers are working. Yeah, my, 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 my. my prayers are working. I have answered prayers. I have answered prayers. My prayers are working. My prayers are working. My prayers are working. By the power of the Holy Ghost. My prayers are working. Yeah, by working. They are working. They are working. They are working. I have answered prayers. Yeah, Father, come by. Amen. Say with me in the name of Jesus. My prayers are working. When I pray, my father hears. I have my, I have answered prayers. My prayers are working. They work every day. They work every time. My father hears me every single time. I have the proof of answer prayers all around me. All around me. My prayer is working for my career. It's working for my business. It's working for my job. It's working for my finance. It's working for my marriage. It's working for my family. It's working. It's working everywhere. I'm a bundle of answer prayers. Hallelujah. This week is a week of answer prayers for me. I'm walking in my testimony. I'm I'm walking in my testimony. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen, somebody. Are your prayers working? This is a confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And Jesus said, Father, thank you because you heard me. And thank you because you always hear me. Thank you because you hear me. Everybody say, thank you because you hear me. Thank you because you always hear me. We're well, going to jump seven times. And I say jump, it's not big jump. I want to just tap on your feet. I want to be a bit excited. Say, my prayer is working. Say, my prayer is working. Say my prayer is working. I have answered prayers. I have answered prayers. This week, I step into answer prayers. This week, all around me, there is answer prayers. Shout and receive it. Yeah, 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 everywhere. Yeah, keep it shaking. Revoco pote. Saman de le conchata. Someone says, did we have to jump? When you get good news, you're never still. <laughs> New image alert, answered prayers. <laughs> New image alert, funding received. Recovery has begun. Engagement has happened. Expansion has come. Pregnancy has come. In the name of Jesus, have you received it? into this week, the week of answer prayers. I'm stepping to this week, the week of answer prayers. All of that. Amen. Next Sunday, you are coming with your testimony. Hey, I said that approval is yours. I said that funding has come. Receive the expansion in the name of Jesus. God bless you can have your sins. Whoa! 
Praise God.